let's be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy, and the God of all consolation, who comforts us in all our sorrows, so we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. Thanks be to God. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into Christ's death and resurrection. We are buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. For we have been united with Jesus in a death like his, and we shall certainly be united with him then in a resurrection like his. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our brother Butch Milky. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. And in your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until, by your call, we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Arnold Dennis Milky Jr. of Marion was called into his eternal home on Saturday, December 10th, 2022 at Theta Clark Medical Center in Appleton. Arnold arrived as a firstborn on August 12th, 1934 to Arnold Loretta Malig Milky. He was, in, or I should first of all add, he was baptized right here in 1934, and then was confirmed his faith again in this sanctuary in February, strange time back then, of 1948. He was united in marriage to Marjorie Went Milky on October 2nd, 1965 at Peace Lutheran Church in Split Rock. Arnold, much better known as Butch, attended McKinley School, a rural country school, and then served in the Army from 1955 to 1958, spending two of those years in Ina Weetok. When he returned home, he farmed with his dad and his uncles Harvey and Jack, drove a school bus for Marion, worked at a Tigerton Lumber Company, and for a time at Nolan Sales. After a long day of farm work, he relaxed by bowling on a team. Later, he purchased the homestead and farmed until it came time for him to retire. After retiring from his love of farming for 20 years, Butch found his special joy in transporting Amish to many locations in the area. He and Margie enjoyed the times when their children got behind the wheel and took them to many different areas of the United States. Butch made friends easily and had a booming voice that could be heard before you even saw him. You also didn't have to wonder what Butch was thinking because he told you straight out. In 2017, he and Margie made that move from the farm back to their home in Marion where they began their life together. Butch and Margie loved dancing at the Caroline Ballroom. He loved watching his kids play sports and served as an umpire for the Caroline 4-H club softball. His latest polka music love was Molly B. And he would listen to her music for hours while watching the birds chest outside of his living room window. He and his family loved the Packers, Brewers, Badgers, and Bucks and they all cheered them on with great volume. 
Birch was a lifelong member here of St. John's Lutheran Church in Marion, where he ushered and served on a church council. He has survived 57 years of marriage with you, Margie. There are three children, Cheryl Milky of Green Bay, Caroline, Carolyn Milky of Marion now, and then Randy, wife Shelley Milky of Woodstock, Georgia. His brother James, wife Lou of Two Rivers, sister Arlene Whiskey of Swansboro, North Carolina now, and his brother Dave, wife Jean of Kiwani. His in-laws, Larry and wife Darlene Peterson of Appleton, Shirley Bacoit of Caroline, Vern, wife Connie Went of Ogdensburg, and Don and wife Linda Went of Wittenberg. And of course, his two grand puppies, Cooper and Charlie, who brought much happiness and entertainment during their visits. He also leaves behind many cousins, nieces, nephews, relatives, and countless friends. Putch was preceded in death by his parents, his parents in law Harvey and Alma Went, brother in law Ray Bacoit, and again, preceded in death by his grandpappy Bailey, who Butch, of course, had to rename as Moochie. Now times for uh, eulogy. We enter a dangerous time. The family asserted that I should say only five minutes is allotted to this totally because uh, if we open the, the floor to uh, stories about Butch, they could be endless. So keep in mind, we have a time limit, and when I stand up, the time is over except I forgot my watch, so. <laughs> Carolyn, stories of Butch Milky. Hello. Thanks for coming. Thanks for risking your lives in the weather and all of that. And I know that we decided on a timeline, but things change, and otherwise I'd be cut off. So I'm sure this might go longer than planned. Um, I'm Carolyn Milkey, and I'm the middle one, the Jan Brady of the family. Um, if you think about the traits of a great father, what would you think of? A great father or dad administers justice, and dad administered justice through his hand in spankings. He didn't need a belt or anything else. Um, I felt the sting of his spankings that corrected my behavior quite quickly. And at the same time, one must administer mercy as well. And his great parenting act, I believe, was when I messed up. He told me to stop the diesel fuel. He was fueling the tractor, and he had to do something. Sure, Dad, I've got it. And my brother and I, were he was pitching to me, and we got into our little game of baseball, and then suddenly I heard um, liquid flowing from the tractor. It overflowed in diesel fuel. And I said, I ran crying to the house saying, Mom, Mom, Dad's going to kill me. And I don't know. He doesn't even remember it, I guess. But I don't know if Mom negotiated but dad never said a word to me because there's no way he could have done anything worse to me than I already did to himself. So sometimes silence is the best parenting act you can do. He was persistent. We would be doing projects and sometimes he couldn't figure out how to do something, especially when we were moving off the farm. And it, it's getting to be 1 o'clock in the morning, and I'm thinking, certainly, Dad, you will stop now. We can, we can get at it in the morning. But no, he kept at it until he was done. 
A great father is persistent. A great dad is also a giver. He said yes to sponsoring children around the world, which is one of my passions. So he gave of his finances and he gave of his time. Um, for whatever reason, there was a big, big pile of wood across from the Pacoits, and somebody lit it on fire one night. And Dad, after that was all done, maybe a day later, Dad made me go out there with a pickup truck so he could have his headlights on it, and they were spreading out the wood. I think it was an Amish, the Amish wood pile. But I was so proud of him, of how he directed that project amongst all of the people. A great father, or I should say dad, I never called him father, is a provider. We three kids always had everything we needed. Not necessarily what we wanted, because when I was a kid, I wanted a horse. And I tried to convince dad that we were going to be in the Kentucky Derby and we were going to win millions. But for some reason, dad said something about they eat too much hay. <laughs> A great father has funny sayings. Um, my boyfriend at the time, we were at a volleyball tournament, and later on, he, was, he had been with Dad, and then he comes back and he goes, who's Rose? Who's Rose? I said, what do you mean, who's Rose? He goes, well, I was with your dad, and he was trying to start the truck, and the truck wouldn't start, so he kept saying, well, kiss old Rose. Kiss old Rose. <laughs> who's Rose? <laughs> How do you explain that, right? <laughs> <laughs> then, out of the blue, we're, we'll be sitting in the house, and all of a sudden, he'll go like this. Whoa! <coughs> <coughs> Only dad. When people think of my dad, they think of entertainment or funny and stuff like that. And everybody knows he supported us in sports. He was the loudest person there, uh, yelled at the referee pretty good. Um, I always did yell at the referee, too. And one thing stopped that when I had a referee. After that, I never yelled at referees. Um, when we had band concerts, he would be the first one to give us a standing ovation and he would be yelling, encore, encore. And everybody always said, oh, Carolyn, you're dead. <laughs> um, he also made sure that we had, you know, basketball hoops set up and softball and football. And then the one day in the winter, he broke out the wooden skis. How many of you have wooden skis with the belt holding your foot into place? Some of you are nodding. Yeah, that was awesome. It's like, hey, we get to ski. He was a great innovator. He was like a MacGyver, if you remember MacGyver, Gene. Yeah, Gene loves MacGyver. He, if I broke any, if we broke anything, he could fix anything. If we needed something to be made, he would figure out a way to rig it together. He was the smartest guy I ever have known about things that matter. He loves adventure. So I bought a timeshare in 1999 to show mom and dad the world. Not the world, the country. Mom won't fly. Um, he, we would always sometimes go on a boat excursion. It didn't matter what type the boat was, whether it was a big cruising boat or a sailboat, and it wouldn't matter the speed. Whenever he was in the boat, he felt like he had to talk to the captain. So he's walking all over the place. Doesn't matter the wind. He, was, he always thought in his mind, nothing's going to happen. We took him on hikes. One of my favorite hikes was Zion National Park. 
where we walked to an overlook and he was wearing loafers. I said, Dad, you're going to fall off the cliff. But he, he wanted to experience life to the fullest. A great dad provides protection. One night during Christmas time, now remember, we are known for having the star on our silo that he put up. There was a knock at the door. Whenever there's anybody at the door, dad would get the door. And there was a guy that said, hi, sir. We've been having trouble with our car. And we looked around and we didn't know where to go. And then we saw the star. <laughs> and dad said, this sure ain't Bethlehem. <laughs> A great dad sacrifices for his kids. Um, so picture yourself. You're a farmer. You're tired. But the Packers are having fan photo day. So we begged him to go to fan photo day. Halfway to Green Bay, we pull over. He goes, I got to take a 10-minute nap. So here's us little kids pulled over to the side of the road where... If you know where 187 is, that's where we pulled over. Every time we pass that, I think of that spot. And so here, we're in the back seat, and here's Dad. <laughs> and people are going past us thinking, oh, my gosh, what happened in that car? <laughs> ten seconds before the ten minutes is up, he woke up, and off we went, and we had a great time. A great dad shows his kids work ethic. Now, I'm sure you all know about the, um, the work that farmers go through, but even at the ages, age of 80 and 81, he would be gone sometimes 12 to 14 hours, um, driving his extended family, the Yamish, who were very close to his heart, driving them around. He loved the Yamish. When he turned 88, the Amish made his day at the haystack. Eleven of them were surrounding the, the truck. And then we went up to our land and, well, Chester and Freeman's land now. And they all came out to say hi to him. That made his eyes twinkle. If you've ever seen my dad's eyes twinkle, that made his tw eyes twinkle. And love, he rarely mentioned I love you, but he showed it every day. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if he was scared of the word, but we knew he loved us. I think it was like Brett Favre's dad. He never told him he loved him either, but I think I heard it from my dad twice. But he showed it every day, and in the end, that's what matters. Of all those things he gave us, though, the greatest gift him and mom gave us was Jesus, because he took us to church every week, most of the time, no matter what. Maybe we miss two Sundays a year, whatever. But he introduced me to the love of my life. It's because of Jesus that I can even stand up here. Because we don't grieve as others grieve who have no hope. We know that we're going to be with Dad again someday. The separation, that's what makes us cry. But we will be united beyond a shadow of a doubt because God told me. Um, it's because of Jesus we're able to go on. We know what the future holds. One day, the day before he died, I thought, what could I tell Dad? Because I knew he was going to pass. What could I tell Dad that I haven't told him before? I go, Dad, think about all of the dads out there in the world. I'm so glad God chose you for me. And it made him cry. And I said, I'm sorry for putting you through so many things. And he goes, don't worry. You weren't that bad of a person. <laughs> And 
And so, Dad, as you would say, it's time for me to rest in pieces. <laughs> and so, Dad, you go rest in pieces and soak in the grandeur of heaven. Thanks for everything, and I'll see you real soon. The family asked me to say a few words, but I'm a little choked up after, uh, that was great. I don't know how I'm gonna follow you, but I'll do my best. Um, so my name's Carrie. I was Butch's nurse in home health care, and um, I am just so impressed with their family. Um, really great. Um, you know, he taught them very well, and they all really showed love to each other, and support, and Cece, um, um, excuse me, Cece being able to come here to Wisconsin and stay with them and support them so he could stay in his own home was such a blessing. Okay, now we have to have some humor. So um, they told me I could share some information related to um, health care. They gave me permission to speak of um, some of that would, that normally would be confidential. I started to call my visits the comedy hour because we laughed more than we did anything else while I was there. Um, Butch was very mischievous. He had that twinkle in his eye, um, and I wasn't afraid to give it back to him. So it was, I really enjoyed our visit each week. Um, one of the things that came about, um, I'd be talking, reviewing our visit, um, what to expect and when our next visit was, and Butch would say, when are you going to leave? <laughs> and I just laughed because he had a twinkle in his eye. Um, I did reply one time, you know, Butch, my family used to pay me quarters to stop talking. And he got a little kick out of that, too. <laughs> one of, during one of our uh, weekly procedures I had to do with Butch, we needed to get a drop of blood out of his finger but his fingers are always very cold. So we have a protocol of everything we should do. And we tried everything to warm up his finger. You know, Cece, she'd have a warm washcloth. She'd hold his hand. He'd sit on his hand. Um, you know, warm water, everything. And I'm just like, what else am I going to do? And normally the next protocol is to put your hand in your armpit. But Butch didn't have that dexterity to do that. He could do like this. So I'm thinking, hmm. I talked to Marge and Cece. I'm like, maybe we should put his hand down his pants. <laughs> <laughs> and, Butch, <laughs> and Butch said, you want to do what? <laughs> so, so I explained to him, over your undergarments, underneath the waistband of your pants. And he just shook his head. <laughs> so, so he did agree to do it. And sure enough, we got that drop of blood first try. Seven weeks in a row, it worked, doing that protocol. I know it definitely is not what I'm supposed to do. Um, <laughs> but um, desperate times call for desperate measures versus poking him four times and causing more pain. Um, another incident here, um, he really had a lot of pain normally with another procedure and I would have Marge and Cece distract him and I'd be done and he's like, when is she going to get to work? And I'm like, butch, I'm done. You're done? So he didn't even feel the pain because they distracted him and they were really a great team with, for that particular procedure. Um, you know, again, you know, with the vows, you know, better for worse, sickness and health. You know, I've, I've been in the healthcare field for 30 years. I've seen a lot of really um, sad family situations, non-supportive, and I'm just so impressed 
with everything they've done to work with him and be able to keep him home and all of the compassion, the laughter, and the love that this family has. So I felt so blessed to take care of your dad. So thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Dave Butch's baby brother. Uh, as we've heard by numerous people, Butch loved life. He enjoyed being with people, and people enjoyed being with him. And here are a few of my favorite memories of my big brother. Butch loved milking cows, something I have never understood. <laughs> Butch loved polka music, which was always on the, ro on the radio while we were milking cows. Butch loved polka dancing. As Carolyn uh, recalled, Butch would dance to the point of sweating through his shirt that he was wearing. Butch loved going to the root beer stand in summer after a long day of work. Butch loved ice cream, especially with maple syrup. Butch loved driving the Amish all over central Wisconsin. For me, to arrange for a visit with Butch would first require he check his Amish driving itinerary. <laughs> he was the Amish Uber of Marion. <laughs> Butch loved attending sporting events, whether it be football, basketball, baseball, high school, college, or professional. He traveled to three professional football Hall of, Fame gate, uh, Hall of Fame ceremonies, which I wasn't aware of until we talked about it last Saturday. Butch loved watching sports on TV. During any season, he would watch two, three, or more games at the same time. He was the ultimate channel surfer when it came to sports. And during baseball season, I swear he would switch channels in between pitches. <laughs> Most of all, Butch loved his family. Marge, Cheryl, Cece, Randy, and Shelley were the joy of his life. And everything he did revolved around being with his family. All of the trips were with his family. As I stated in the beginning, Butch loved life. He enjoyed being with people and people enjoyed being with him. Hope we'll give you all opportunity to respond by joining together and singing in the garden.
And our thanks to Sister-in-law Shirley Picoit for uh, reading the Old Testament readings. I am going to be reading a different version than what is in your program. And the reading that was chosen from God's Word is from the 43rd chapter of Isaiah, verses 1 through 7. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you. Because you are precious in my sight and honored, I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. To everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Our second reading is found in Psalm 20, 75, verses 23 to 26. Nevertheless, I am continually with you. You hold my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you will receive me with honor. Whom have I in heaven but you? And there is nothing on earth that I desire other than you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and portion forever. Indeed, those who are far from you will perish. Put an end to those who are false to you. But for me, it is good to be near God. I have made the Lord God my refuge to tell all of your works. Here ends the reading. We continue with, I know that my Redeemer lives. We'll sing the first two and last two verses. One and two and seven and eight. It's in the red or cranberry colored ELW, number 619.
and the gospel verse to prepare for hearing God's word. Hallelujah! Jesus Christ is the firstborn of the dead. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah. And we just sang what this gospel lesson will be saying to us. John 14, verses 1 through 7. Do not let your hearts be troubled, Jesus said. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. I will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the, the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. The gospel of our Lord. Well, quite a surprise and honor to uh, be here. I haven't stood in this spot for uh, over uh, 20 years, so a little different. Yeah, some things have changed, though, in, in the, that time. But I remember 35 years and two months ago is when I met you. And how significant and wonderful, thanks much, Carrie, for what you said about this family because that was evident right away when uh, Claudia and I came to serve here at St. John's. And I remember well, I think, Randy, it was probably your confirmation. And going around, we came late and everyone else had gone. But your dad, Butch, husband, welcomed us in and made sure that we stayed far longer yet. And of course, much of it was been talking about the Packers, Brewers, and Bucks. But I only remember that being the topic. The essence of the conversation was really the process of speaking. We never actually talked about those teams. It was rather our experiences of cheering for them, having attended games, or meeting any of them. Always with your dad's great smile, punctuated by outrageous laughter, and then story after story, and moving in all kinds of direction. And then leaving that night, and Claudia and I realizing we had just encountered a family centered in love, centered in loving life, centered in engaging, so opening and clearly and trustingly with others. Of course, that's why all of you are here today. Claudia was so loved to have been here with me, our, my wife, but Margie, our lives moved the opposite direction of you and Butch. In 2017, you left the farm and uh, came into town. In 2018, Claudia and I bought the farm. <laughs> Some farm and land, and in the years since, we're wondering, oh, Holy Spirit, where are you? leading us, and now we live on a farm. We have a wonderful son-in-law, organic dairy farmer, Jake Wiedeberg, who does all the work, and we just look out the window and watch him work <laughs> and rent just a little land to uh, his larger uh, establishment and work. And Claudia takes care of Amanda's uh, child, their, grand, their child, our granddaughter, so Amanda can teach each day, so Claudia is busy very much with uh, Claire today and can't be here. But I and Claudia have learned to love the land. As we celebrate Butch today, perhaps one thing to begin with remembering his joy when Margie, you with him, bought the homestead 
and continued that milky tradition on that farm and the love of land. And coming to learn, as he did through those years, you didn't own the land, the land owned you. And completed so powerfully when you sold the land, but really you simply transferred the ownership, not of the land, but that's land's ownership to Chester and Freeman. And your joy and your commitment to stewarding that land so the next people would come to love it as deeply as you did and to, in many ways, be owned by that smell and feel and, feel and love of that place. Well, as we celebrate Butch, we must also celebrate his personality, his witty personality. Well, kiss that old rose, son of a duck. And probably all of you could think of some expressions, yeah, that uh, Butch would come up with that you never would know and to enliven every encounter. And his concern in what he was saying was not what he was saying, but in your response. And your openness that you could respond fully as yourself. And celebrating Butch, of course, all the trips that you took. Well, sometimes Margie, without you, like to Montana because the elevation was too high, or to Idaho because Butch had a whole gang of women <laughs> with him. And Carolyn, you're leading that. What was it, the 13 states in 18 days? But really the treasure, Margie, when you were there. And Cheryl and Randy and, and Shelly and Carolyn and Cece, all of you together. The time in Washington, the uniqueness of being just, what, three houses down from Bill Gates on the 4th of July, and you stealing in on their 4th of July. And all the houses around outdid the gates, and you sitting over that campfire with s'mores and thinking, we're part of this? And loving it as family together. Or the time in Door County, not long ago, when Peninsula Park rebuilt that tower and a ramp for it, and you wheeling him up to the top of that, and the breathtaking view, and how deeply moved he was sharing that. And then animals on those trips. Randy, you counting out the, calling out the bear at Glacier Park. Maine waiting for when you would see the moose and your dad's husband spying a moose that ended up chasing you. <laughs> Seeing a whale out there, there in Maine. The wonders of God's creation so anchored for you as family. All the trips that you delighted in and it took in. But then, of course, if we think of butch music, there's only one kind, polka. Listening to the music and in earlier times dancing to it. And celebrating butch has to be, of course, family, as we're doing. Margie? how big the hole, but how amazing the 57 years. When you got married and looked at him, would you ever have guessed 57 years and how full of life it would be? And for all of you, Cheryl, Carolyn, Randy, how devoted your father was to you. You've told the stories, but his, as you also mentioned to me, taking you to college and the importance of education as it came to be in your family, instilled in you. And then the stories. Each of you have individually uniqueness, carrot cake story, Randy, for you. Margie, his cut eyebrow, and we can't even say in church the uh, source of what cut his eyebrow, had something to do with manure. That's as close as we'll get. And his uh, tripping.
we are here in church because Butch brought his family here every week. And here we begin learning that God not only loves us, but weaves our time relationships in incredible ways. I call them wonders because they're much greater, amazing, more amazing than miracles. And so the, the wonder of even his goodbye. And so James and Dave, that you were with him in that last moment, bringing in the polka music, a 24-hour source of uh, polka music. And his great joy in sharing that time and being so at peace that as soon as you left, he peacefully died and quickly. Because all was woven and threaded together so well. The importance of animals in his life, the Cooner, Charlie, and Bailey that you had named, his love of cardinals and the last months watching the cardinals and all the birds that you made sure the bird feeder was filled that he could see. These last months, his incredible joy of seeing what was happening in the farm. In the 1930s, what did he see when he grew up on that farm? But likely shocks of grain. And these last months, his joy in seeing shocks of grain. Again, back on that land. God weaving time together in incredible ways in the artistry of God's creation and God's land and weaving us to be united in it. And to the Amish community, if we can bring you in because you brought great joy to Butch and the depth of your faith that you celebrate and how significant that was in your lives and how you share that with Butch. And think of the amazement that Butch was the one who drove you the last 20 years all over. And now you are the ones, as a last act for him, who carry him, literally, to his last resting place. Time woven together. And Butch's great love for land, as pallbearers include the Amish, but also those who love the land with him, his immediate neighbors, Leroy and Dale, because you share the bond of not only a family and friendship, but a, a bond of stewardship of land and the land owning you and you caring, Butch, literally, so that he might be planted in land, the seed of God's new creation. So it is an honor for me to be here and a great joy, blessed by this incredible life well lived. But let's end with the incredible blessing forged in God's word and wonder given to us into whose hands we commend Butch Milky. You chose these readings, and how profound they are, from Isaiah and Psalm 73, God speaking because it's God's living word, so it's meant exactly as it says, now, thus says the Lord, on this day, in the year 2022, God is speaking again. God says, I'm the one who created you. I'm the one who formed you. And this is a message in the midst of your grief on this day. Do not fear. I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Yes, Butch Milky. But all of you are mine, God states today. Life is a journey, a challenging journey, and old does God know what God has laid upon us. But note the statement there in Isaiah 73. When you pass through the waters, when you know you're drowning and you're in over your head, I will be with you, God states. Through the rivers, when you think you're going to be overwhelmed, when you walk through fire and your feet are put to that fire, 
you will not be burned and the flame will not consume you. For I am with you. I am the Lord, the Holy One, your Savior. I give everything for you. And oh, do we know that as we come to the celebration of Christmas. And then he triples down. Because you are precious in my sight. I honor you. I love you. I give everything for you. Even God's only child. Do not fear how you're going to get through this life without Butch Milky. Psalm 73 even says, I am with you continually. I will bring your offspring, perhaps a message to Butch, I will bring your generation, your offspring. I'm going to be with them. All that lies ahead, they are going to be without. I will gather all of you, everyone called by my name. And then the gospel lesson, Jesus himself speaks to us. The context is that Jesus has finished his last meal, and he's walking to the Garden of Gethsemane. He knows he's about to be crucified by the religious and political leaders in the most gruesome, pain-filled way. That's the context. And his last words. And Peter is just says, oh, Jesus, don't sweat it, because I'll never uh, let go of you. I will always be there. And right before these words we heard, Jesus turns to Peter and says, will you, Peter? Very true, I tell you. Before the rooster can even crow next, you have denied me three times. Jesus is saying these words, you all fail. That's why God came to earth. We can't do it. And Jesus' word then is, do not fear. Don't let your hearts be troubled. His assurance is real. Life hurts. But trust in God. Trust also in me, Jesus says. Been there, done that. Died, painful, too young, suddenly, awful. I know you. I know where you are going. And I know in whose arms, always around you. And into whose hands today we entrust Butch Milky. In my Father's house there are many mansions, Jesus assures all of us. And what Jesus is all about, what we celebrate, born in a stable, laid in a manger, announced to sheep and shepherds, is Jesus prepares a place. Jesus takes us there. Jesus wants and wills that we are with him. And he with us always. We struggle with this. It's too much to believe, receive, and incorporate into our life. And Thomas speaks, what? Where are you going, Jesus? How can we know the way? And so when we struggle, Jesus makes it clear. I am the way and the truth and the life. Jesus did it in his dying and rising. He's made the way. Jesus is the truth deeper than information because it's not what it's in our head, it's what in our heart. It's not what we know, it's the one who knows us and has us. That is truth. And Jesus is the life. When our heart is wrenched from us, when we feel we cannot breathe and life is closing in. In this life, as long, long as we live, and in the next world and life beyond our death, Jesus is always life, like Butch Milky's life. Big smile, boisterous laugh, unsatiable with delighting in life. That's what Jesus brings, Butch now, and all of us. 
endless, eternal, unending, immeasurable peace, joy, hope, and love. Into those arms, now, we commend Butch Milky. And that's what we'll carry all of you through. Let's join in singing. Uh, Butch picked out this song, his favorite one. Oh, Master, let me walk with you. In the ELW again, 818. And let us pray. Your response, I'll end each petition with God of mercy, is hear our prayer. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you knit your chosen people together into one communion of saints, into the body of Christ. Give to your whole people in heaven and earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to share the new life in Christ. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to all those who mourn and assurance certain hope in your loving care that casting all our sorrow on you, we may have strength for all the days ahead. God of mercy, Hear our prayer. Grant us grace now to entrust Butch Milky to your never failing love, which sustained him in this life. Receive Butch into the arms of your mercy and remember him according to the favor you bear for your people. God of mercy. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death, Jesus destroyed the power of death. And by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because Jesus lives, we shall live also. And that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Let's join in our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Butch Milky. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive Butch into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of saints in light. Amen. Because we cannot go to the cemetery today, I will include the committal here that we may put Butch fully to rest, even for those who won't be there at that time. We begin with a reading from the Gospel of John that Jesus states, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though they die, yet shall they live, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Let us pray. Holy God, holy and powerful, by the death and burial of Jesus, your anointed, you destroyed the power of death. You made holy the resting places of all your people. Keep our brother Butch Milky, whose body we now lay to rest. Keep him in the company of all your saints. And at the last, O oh God, raise Butch up to share with all the faithful people the endless joy and peace. One through the glorious resurrection of Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Again, from the Gospel of John, Jesus said, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever clings to their life loses it, and whoever rejects life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, they must follow me, and where I am, there shall my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor them. So it is in sure and certain hope of that resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ that we now commend to Almighty God, our brother Butch Milky. And we commit his body to its resting place, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord bless Butch and keep him. The Lord's face shine on Butch with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon Butch with favor and give him peace. Amen. Rest eternal, grant him, O Lord, and let your light perpetual shine upon him. Now for all of us, O merciful God, you heal the broken in heart and bind up the wounds of the afflicted. Strengthen us in our weakness. Calm our troubled spirits. And dispel our doubts and fears. In Christ, rising from the dead, you conquered death and opened the gates to eternal life. Renew continually our trust in you that by the power of your love, we shall one day be brought together again with our brother Butch Milky. Grant this we ask and pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We'll join in singing Because He Lives.
We'll end with the blessing, of course, now for all of you. Don't be surprised if right after the blessing, polka music may come out. <laughs> and then there will be military honors for uh, the family under the carport. The rest of you may not all fit. That will be to the left. There is food for everyone, however, in the fellowship room. That will be to the right. So those of you who can't get in to see the uh, military honors, you can make your way already to the fellowship room. We'll have a table prayer there and then with the family and so they can go first. And then there's lots and lots of food. I've tested it already for all the rest of you. So let us go into this loss, but all the journey each of us face with God's blessing. May that God of peace who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, transform everything good into you so that you live out God's will, working among us that which is well-pleasing in God's sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And let us go in peace.